Did you know that your thyroid has to pay a tax if you have gut problems? I call it the thyroid gut tax. Despite the fact that your thyroid is not anatomically very close to your gut, they are still connected. And the reason for this is multifold. One, estimates suggest that about 20% of circulating T4 is converted into T3 in the gut. Two, healthy bacteria bind to and hold on to thyroid hormones, allowing for the recycling of these hormones instead of the elimination of them in the stool. Three, your gut is the site of the absorption of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients from both the foods that you eat and the supplements that you take. And your thyroid needs these nutrients to function optimally. Four, it's the site where thyroid medication is absorbed. Five, 70% of your immune cells live there. Six, the ratio of good to bad bacteria bacteria known as your microbiome and found in your gut influences your metabolism and your ability to lose weight. Collectively, the connection between your gut and your thyroid is known as the thyroid gut axis. So you can imagine what happens when your gut isn't in working order. Your thyroid pays the price. You end up with less circulating T3, the most powerful thyroid hormone, due to decreased T4 to T3 conversion, you end up absorbing fewer nutrients needed to support your thyroid, like zinc, selenium, and iodine. You end up absorbing less of your thyroid medication, thereby rendering it less effective. You put yourself at increased risk for developing autoimmune disease and inflammation, which by the way, is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. And it's harder to lose weight, both from changes in thyroid function and changes to how many calories you absorb from the food that you eat. This is exactly why I say that improving your gut health is one of the fastest ways to increase thyroid function by 20% or more. There's no scientific study to prove this claim. It stems from an understanding of thyroid physiology and my own experience in observing patients who take their gut health seriously. Imagine this scenario, which is probably not that much different from what you're experiencing right now. It all starts in your stomach where your thyroid regulates in part how much stomach acid is being produced. When your thyroid is sluggish, your stomach can't produce the acid that it needs. As a result, you have a hard time digesting your food, which alters the concentration of bacteria in your small intestines, and you end up with a condition called dysbiosis. If this problem isn't addressed, you'll end up with another condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which about 50% of thyroid patients suffer from, and symptoms like gas, constipation, and bloating. Because of all these problems, you now have a harder time absorbing the thyroid medication that your doctor gave you, so now your thyroid function is even worse than when you started, and the problems don't stop here. Worsening thyroid function then slows down the rhythmic motion of your gut, known as peristalsis, which makes your constipation worse and makes you even more bloated. This then causes acid reflux, because the contents of your stomach are not able to move forward, so they get reflux back up into your esophagus. To treat this acid reflux, your doctor gives you an acid blocking medication, which further reduces your stomach acid, thereby rendering your thyroid medication even less effective and decreasing nutrient absorption even more. And the cycle goes on and on and on until you do something about it. That something can't just be taking another medication because that won't solve the problem. In order to fix it, you have to address two things at once, your thyroid and your gut. Your thyroid because all of the problems originally started because of your thyroid problem and your gut because that's where all the problems are potentiated and made worse. Let's start by talking about how to fix your gut first. You could spend a lot of time trying to fix your gut and end up diving down rabbit hole after rabbit hole in the process. But that's just generally not needed because there are three treatments which provide you 80% of the benefit for 20% of the work. Yes, some people may need to address problems like gut infections, yeast overgrowth syndromes, and histamine intolerance, but most people can get by without ever knowing what these things are. The 80% of the benefit that you get to your gut will come from these three treatments. Number one, putting the right healthy foods into your body. Number two, removing unhealthy and inflammatory foods. And number three, taking probiotics. It's tempting to jump straight into the probiotics first, but here's the deal. By far, the single biggest factor that determines your gut health has been shown in study after study to be the food that you eat. Yes, other things can impact your gut health, like certain medications and even other medical conditions, but food still remains the top priority. This means number one and number two go hand in hand. Not only do you need to remove the unhealthy foods that you're probably already eating, but you also need to replace them with healthy alternatives. Here's how to do it. First, stop eating foods that fit into any of these categories. Any and all processed foods, artificial sweeteners, alcohol, inflammatory oils, trans fat, 
and excessive meat proteins. On top of these general categories, thyroid patients also tend to have problems with gluten and dairy, so you may want to avoid these as well. Instead of eating these foods, replace them with the following. Foods that are rich in prebiotics, like chicory root, Jerusalem artichoke, bananas, oats, apples, and kiwis, foods that are rich in polyphenols and bioactive compounds, including pretty much any vegetable, fruit, or fruit juice, but especially orange juice, pomegranate juice, berries, and vegetables from the brassica family, fermented foods like kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, tempeh, and even yogurt, foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids like chia seeds, hemp hearts, and flaxseed, and healthy oils like extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and grass-fed butter. There will definitely be some variation in terms of how you personally react or respond to the foods listed above, so it may take some trial and error to figure out what works best for you. If you find any of this confusing, just remember to eliminate processed foods and only eat real whole foods, and you'll already be 80% of the way there. The next step, start taking a probiotic. You might be tempted to think that taking a probiotic isn't necessary, especially if you are already eating a lot of fermented foods. After all, don't these foods have probiotics built into them? Yes, they do, but the probiotic diversity and species found in fermented foods can vary quite dramatically. For instance, yogurt is not a great source of probiotics because the dosing is relatively small and the diversity is not very robust. In addition, thyroid patients tend to have a hard time with dairy-based products. So foods like yogurt and kefir may be off the table for you. This is where probiotics step in. They provide you with a quick and easy way to get beneficial probiotics and yeast straight into your gut, which can have an immediate positive impact on your microbiome. Are they required? No, not if you're following the dietary guidelines that I just mentioned previously. But they can accelerate your results which is why I think it's a great idea to use them, especially if you're trying to break the thyroid gut damaging cycle that I mentioned previously. This leaves us with an important question. Which probiotics are best if you have a thyroid problem and you're trying to heal your gut? Thyroid patients tend to do best using what I call a multi-species approach. That is, using as many different types and species of probiotics to get as much diversity as possible. Most people think that when they take probiotics, they colonize their gut and crowd out the bad bacteria. But this is more wrong than right. Yes, some species do colonize the GI tract, but for the most part, probiotics work through different mechanisms. They work by enhancing the barriers of the gut known as tight junctions, improving mucus production, modulating the immune system, directly impacting host neurotransmitter levels, and by producing antimicrobial substances like short-chain fatty acids, which help keep bad bacteria in check. And the best part is that these benefits are realized almost instantly after you take probiotics, making them a powerful tool in healing your gut. And if you're wondering about which species you should be taking, here's my preferred list for thyroid patients. Soil-based organisms, including Bacillus clausii, Bacillus coagulans, and Bacillus subtilis. Beneficial yeast, such as Saccharomyces boulardii, and bifido and lactostrains. There are a lot of different types here, but pay special attention to B. bifidum, B. lactis, B. longum, L. acidophilus, L. casei, L. brevis, and L. raminosis. Each of these is usually sold as its own probiotic supplement, so you'll probably need to purchase multiple types in order to get all three. Of those listed, only soil-based organisms actually colonize the GI tract and provide long-term benefits. Even though the other two do not colonize the GI tract, they're still beneficial because they provide immediate benefits. By combining healthy eating habits with daily probiotics, you will be well on your way to extracting a 20% bonus in thyroid function in just a few months. Do you remember that imaginary scenario that we talked about previously? Well, here's what happens when you do everything right instead of everything wrong. Removing harmful processed foods reduces inflammation in your gut and allows the lining of your gut to heal. Healthy foods in the form of probiotics and prebiotics promote the growth of healthy concentrations of bacteria, which bring your microbiome back into balance. As a result, you are now absorbing more nutrients from the food that you eat and more thyroid hormone from the thyroid medication that you are taking. More nutrients like selenium and iodine mean better thyroid function, which means better acid production and better digestion of your food. This translates into even better gut function, which means you can now properly convert T4 thyroid hormone into T3 thyroid hormone, and your bacteria are now able to bind to and recycle thyroid hormone more appropriately. And finally, your intestinal tract speeds back up again, so now you don't have to deal with constipation, and you may be able to get off of your acid-blocking medication. The end result? Better thyroid symptom control of things like fatigue, hair loss, weight gain, and more, as well as 
as better digestive symptom control of things like bloating, constipation, and acid reflux. But if you remember from the very beginning, I mentioned that treating your thyroid is just as important as treating your gut and that you need to do both of these things at the same time. Well, when it comes to treating your thyroid, you have two options, the natural route and the use of thyroid medication. If you wanna learn more about how to naturally treat your thyroid so that you're less reliant on thyroid medication, then I'd recommend checking out this video next.